Well, it's a ghost town just a drive away from the border. The building's still there, but abandoned and falling apart. From a glance, it may not look like much, but as Not In Your Side's Liz Kotelik and photographer Alfonso Sagun Casaus found... The town of Ruby is a place filled with gruesome Arizona history. Yo entro primero. April 26, 1921. Mexican bandits made their way through a small border town with a sinister and deadly agenda. Buenos dias. Tabaco. Certainly. In this moment, in this mercantile, violent Arizona history was about to be made. It's a surprising past for what's now known as an Arizona ghost town tucked in between rolling hills wandering cattle. A windy dirt road leads you to a place only marked by a painted wooden sign. This is Ruby, Arizona. It's dilapidated structures forgotten by many, but certainly we all slept, all five of us slept in this bedroom. Remembered fondly by one. It was home and uh, very, very comfortable. Taya was just a child when she lived here from 1929 until 1938. 300 acres and then there's 60 acres below. <laughs> In her tours of Ruby, she recalls a booming town centered around this mine, once filled with lead. In 1938, 39, the ore began to give out and there was no more jobs and so people began to leave. But before it was abandoned, Ruby was bustling with about 1,200 residents. Taya says she felt safe. But eight years before she was born. You mean where the murders took place? Yes. Oh, that's where the yeah. oh okay, it was right here. The deaths of Mr. and Mrs. Frank Pearson. Oh, it was violent. Absolutely it was violent. The banditos killed the store owners, attempted to murder their children. One girl hit in the arm, but they narrowly escaped their deaths. La caja fuerte. The men then took the store's money, stole Mrs. Pearson's gold teeth, then quickly got out of town. A large posse of citizens and lawmen began frantically searching. See anything in there? No, I don't see nothing. Sheriff, open up. Offering $5,000 rewards for the murderers, dead or alive. Uh, no, I haven't, sir. But after months and months with no luck, a deputy sheriff happened to overhear a bartender. He was trying to sell gold teeth. The bartender said he got them from an outlaw named Manuel Martinez. The teeth, those of Mrs. Pearson. And with that, the deputy sheriff found his guy. With the capture of Martinez also came the arrest of his friend, Placidio Silva. Both put on trial in Nogales, both found guilty of murder. But of course, it doesn't end there. There are differing reports about how the two escaped, but they did. And it sparked the largest manhunt in the history of Arizona's Southwest. But today, it seems both bad history and good are beginning to fade along with Ruby. The town is being kept alive by a couple who lives in Tucson, but they say it's a struggle and they need help with restoration. Taya brings groups of people about once a month, hoping excited minds become enlightened about this forgotten ghost town. And there was a safe over here, and that's what these men apparently got into. But what these tourists have learned, and what you have learned too, is that very rarely does a place like this make its way through time without a story, and rubies, both brutal and bloody, managed to rock an entire state. As for those bandits, both were captured six days after escaping and were once again found guilty of murder. Martinez was hanged in 1923, but Silvas, he escaped in 1928, never to be found again. If you'd like to visit Ruby, tour it with Taya and Pima Community College, or help with restoration, head to our website, kgun9.com. In the newsroom, Liz Kotelik, Kgun9 on your side. And we'd like to thank the Pinnacle Peak Pistoleros for helping us out with this story. They played all of the characters in our reenactments, and you can catch their stunt shows at Trail Dust Town every night. That information is online as well.